Welcome back to another episode in the Tennessee Titans franchise. Today it's week 16. In our fourth season, we're going to be playing the Houston Texans. It's going to be a division rivalry game, and I'm really looking forward to this one. The Texans <laughs> are a team I love to hate. I mean, I really like their style of play. Um, I really think CJ Stroud is a revelation. It's so cool seeing this franchise kind of really get good QB at last. Um, and uh, one that isn't a scumbag, looking at you, Deshaun Watson, but there we go. Um, but this week we're going to be playing them, and these games are always super hard, super hard. Um, it's, the, it's, it's the rivalry thing. I don't know what it is, but it's just always really hard. Plus, the team is really good. 92 offense, 91 defense, 91 overall. Crazy good. We can see the home stretch of the regular season ahead of us. And we are, of course, still missing our starting quarterback. Will Levis is out for a super long time with a complete ACL tear. That really, it breaks my heart to see that. It really does. He was doing so well, and that is just really horrible. And I can't really tell you how this is going to impact the season. We did win against the Eagles last week. Malik Willis really, really stepping up, doing exactly what I hoped he would. So that was fantastic. But apart from that, oof, look at how the playoff uh, picture, it is going to be super hard. It is going to be a really super hard. Um, we're in the divisional uh, picture at the moment. I think we're going to stay there unless we completely muck it up. Um, but then which of these teams is going to be one that I'd like to play uh, with my second quarterback? All right. Who is, again, he is a very good QB, a very good backup QB to have. I'm very happy with him. But, you know, playing against Kansas City, playing against the Chargers, uh, just looking at, at Justin Herbert, Pat Mahomes, Anthony Richardson, Lamar Jackson, uh, <laughs> Josh Allen, or, and I think that uh, the Raiders have, uh, what's his face? I forgot his name now. Jesus Christ. My brain sometimes is really bad. Um, but yeah, going to go up against these teams. This is really going to be crazy hard. Um, to really get something done, especially with our offensive line. That is really, we're feeling the pressure at the moment. We're feeling the fatigue, and that is something that's very hard to manage. I do love that part of the game, though, so we're going to do a deep dive now. Check out the Texans roster. I'm going to be going over this rather quickly. Why? Well, we just play them, all right? So they have CJ Stroud, superstar quarterback, and I'm keep looking at these teams and imagining what would happen if their starting QB was out for a long time. They have Gary Columbus or RT Tyson. So it is the same for all teams. There is no team in the league currently that really has two top level quarterbacks that can kind of just rotate and you don't have any, uh, any difference in there. Um, so that's the quarterback. Uh, in terms of the running backs, we've got a, a crazy good running back uh, team here. Damian Pierce with an X Factor. We've got Raheem Sanders with a superstar Dave Trade and Zach Bass, who is just a very solid running back here. But these two alone are really dangerous. Fullback is Troy Harrison, the wide receiver's tank tail. Fantastic young wide receiver. Mike Williams, a veteran player. Then Keon Grays. We've got Alonzo Rosemont and Darren Brooks. And that is a very solid wide receiving group here. On the tight ends, we've got Dawson Knox, we've got Dalton Schultz, two veterans, and a young player, Bryson Nesbitt, with two years' experience under his belt. Just looking really good. I think he will be overtaking Dalton Schultz um, come the end of the season or beginning of next season. But there we go. Offensive weapons galore. What about the offensive line? Laramie Tunsil, 32-95. Behind him, Kingsley Sumatai. This is succession planning at its finest. He's so good already, and he will be taken over. No questions asked. Uh, left guard Kenyon Green holding that spot. Very nice. Jimmy Monroe as a backup. 89 overall. Very good. Two Scruggs at center. We've got Bradley Bozeman as the backup veteran here. This is a good solution. Right guard Shaq Mason. 33-82. No injuries here. Damon Rushing. That's a rookie who is already as good as Shaq Mason is. I would be using the rookie if it were my franchise series. Um, and Ladarius Green out injured as a backup player. Shaq Mason. If he retires or, or if he leaves the team or if he regresses, I've got two young players that are ready to step into this breach. Right tackle, Ruben Fadri, the second, 24-77, and Donald Derby, that's a rookie, 22-72, looking very nice. On defense, we're facing Will Anderson Jr., a superstar player, 24-99. Let me just check out where he's rated, best ranked left end in the league. Yeah, I'm breaking it, right? I am breaking it already. Philip Moorhead, 
2278. Uh, unlucky injury. There we go. Right edge, Harrison Phillips, former Viking, 30 and 85. Of course, Shamar Stewart here with one year experience and Demarius Ware, two years experience. Very nice looking group here. And again, Harrison Phillips, 30 and 85. Shamar Stewart ready to step up, even a scheme fit. D tackle, Thomas Booker, the fourth out injured so we're going to be facing Malcolm Lynch again another super young player with a very high overall matching that of the starter Kurt Hinnish is the backup left outside linebacker Josh Allen 2988 brutal player uh, Demarius McKenzie as his backup but Josh Allen very good linebacker mid linebacker Smiles Jack another one of those he's just everywhere all the time behind him Henry to Otto who is ready to step it up again very close to the overall of the starter here will be taken over and John Kavanaugh behind him that's a rookie 75 at age 22 fantastic stuff here right outside linebacker Christian Harris 25 and 81 behind him Jonathan Quinton this is a very nice setup on corner we've got Derek Stingley Jr and Greg Newsom II who are locking this down brutal combination we've got Terry and Arnold and Nick Jones who are very solid looking young players and Larry Cooks as a rookie um, Free safety, Reed Blankenship, 27 and 82. Pat McCartney is here, as is Jalen Petrie, 27 and 89 on strong safety with his backup, Jack Howell. Uh, not Sam Howell, by the way. Wonder if that's his brother. Tanner Brown is the starting kicker behind him. Jared Hartman, that is another young player. And J.K. Scott, baby-faced as always, as the punter. So how do we approach this? I reckon we should approach it just the same way we do approach it every time we play the Texans cater to our own strengths try and limit them as much as we can the short pass is selected anyways we could as well just go for the run game try and limit that as much as we can but it is what it is uh, on left edge we will be going for uh, for splits I think uh, James Houston the fourth as my starter and Neil Wilcox as the backup player here uh, both should get some experience points here we're just going to focus on Adisa Isaac on right edge um, I'm going to be focusing on the backups as well on D tackle because here to hard, Rick Armstead don't really need it, but Jarvis Ford definitely want to bump him up a little bit. Uh, left outside linebacker, let's go with the starter training. Here we're going to go with the split. Uh, we are going to go with the split on the right outside linebackers, on the corners, and on the free safety and strong safety. We're going to go with starter training. Full pads, by the way. Let's get some experience points in week 16. And let's just hope that we don't suffer any more brutal injuries here. Full pad training on offense. Yeah, why not? All right, we're going to go with this here. Um, but I will be training the backups a little bit more. I feel like this is something we need to do. Maybe maybe go for split training. I don't want to risk injuring Willick Willis in training too much here. So running backs, let's go for splits. Taichi Spears is back. That's fantastic. Full back, the starters. Wide receivers, let's go for splits. Tight ends, let's go for splits. And here we are going with the starters on the offensive line. Everybody is fit again, but we're doing reduced training for uh, center and guard. Nicholas Piggy Trey just coming back off of a training injury from last week. He missed last week's game. So there we go. And uh, looking at these here, uh, is this really the setup that I have or is somebody injured out of here? I think we've got an injury. Yeah, of course, uh, the quarterback is injured, which is why Justin Pat, he always slides back in. <laughs> Not back in, but back up. Um, I'm going to take a look here. I think I've got another player that I'd rather train up a little bit more. I feel like Neil Wilcox could profit all this. Um, looking at the right edge, at the D-tackle, or Jarvis Ford. I think now we're going to go with Jarvis Ford. I've got plans for him for next season, so let's get him pumped a little bit more. Uh, we're going to go with the fourth three turnovers. Why not? It is uh, it's a tall order, but I think we should be able to get it. 20 points. Let's try that. Um, 400 yards. I don't know what happened, but that is super optimistic. Five offensive touchdowns. Whew. I don't know. I mean, why not? Let's, let's go for it. Um, it seems like a big thing to ask, but uh, yeah, we're just going to go for it. Let's see what we can do. Rejoice, for there are no injuries. Caleb Farley is still in there. Will Levis, of course, and Dylan Fletcher. That's the dude I was looking for. Dylan Fletcher is one of my focus players. He's out injured. The good thing here is that we have revealed his death rate already. Caleb Palmer, we're still trying to do that. We're still trying to do that. Uh, it is taking some time to get that done, but I do hope uh, that we get there. Let me just quickly check up on him. I want to see how much uh, more 
we need to get done in terms of downs. We just get an upgrade and it's 64 downs. All right, we should get that done. We should get that done this week. I don't think so. Maybe next week. I think 30 downs is realistic uh, in two games. So let's upgrade the players. No staff upgrades here and not a lot to upgrade. Dylan McMahon. It is like this. If you don't do full training and focus on the stars or just on one position, then you get slower upgrades, of course, but it's all also uh, less injury risk. But I'm, I really can't wait to see what Caleb Palmer is because he is growing quite nicely. I'd love to see a very high TF trade here. Love to see a superstar, obviously. Don't think it'll be that, but there we go. Neil Wilcox on left edge. We brought him in as a backup for uh, James Houston the fourth. Um, and he's a really interesting player, interesting dude. And that deal made sense. I completely bungled that one last uh, last week when I talked about the trade. We traded with the Eagles, of course, um, and they got uh, Josh, whatever his name is. Jesus, I keep forgetting the names. I'm gonna look it up, guys. I'm really sorry. I have to do this, otherwise I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. But this is something that I just have to know now. It was the uh, left edge, right? Josh Pascal, thank God I remembered it. I didn't remember it. <laughs> but they had Karen Johnson and they had Neil Wilcox. They didn't have a solid uh, edge situation here, which is why we traded him. Uh, they get Josh Pascal. They now have a solid starter on left edge and we have a good backup player. So it's a win-win situation. Realistic trade happening here. And with that said, we are ready to head into this game against the Houston Texans. We're going to be playing away at Energy Stadium. Here we go, Energy Stadium, home of the Houston Texans and Nice Arena. It's a division showdown, of course, as we meet here. Chico Conquo doing very well. 11 touchdowns, 76 receptions, close to 1,300 yards. And of course, as you saw, we are rocking the Oilers uniform. I won't deep dive into this one now, but basically the Tennessee Titans were the Houston Oilers, then they... Uh, moved to Tennessee, then it was the Tennessee Oilers, and then they changed it to the Tennessee Titans, because that just has a little bit more punch. And uh, the Texans were then uh, in uh, in Houston. So this is kind of a rivalry game, if you want to put it that way. But uh, this is the reason why, this is the only reason and the only time we will be using this uniform this season, as Malik Willis is talking to his team members here. CJ Stroud getting his team fired up. And Evan McPherson ready to kick the ball. And uh, yeah, we're getting ready to receive uh, the offense. Our, our defense manages to hold them to three points, which is pretty good. Ty G Spears is back. So we're going to try and get the most out of that here. Do we try and go immediately for a pass? Do we go for a run play? Let, let's let's go with, the one, with a run play just... To get things going here in Ty J Spears, taking number number five. I think that's Jalen Petra, if I'm not mistaken. Second and one. Very happy to have Jalen, uh, to have Ty J Spears back. I do miss him. There is a difference. Chris McAdams is very solid, but he's that solid. He's not as good as Ty J Spears is. He's not as uh, as quick, as powerful as uh, my starting running back is, and. There is a reason why it did give him a new deal. A new long time deal, by the way. And there we go. He does find the space. He does find the way. Good handoffs here from Malik Willis. Uh, last week, I put in Greg Snow just uh, to see him on the field. That is the first quarterback in the depth chart that would be taken over in the case of an injury to Ty J. Spears, who tries to push forward. Nicholas Petit Frere limping again. There are a few positions on the team that I think we need to address next season. Um, it's not really the uh, the offensive line that I want to take a look at. However, if there is a good player on the board, um, I could really see myself replacing Nicholas Petit Frere. He's the I'm not going to say he's the weakest link, but he's the one player that I'm kind of side-eyeing, all right? No disrespect here, but 
this is it's just, it just is what it is he is the one that is most injured and lowest rated and that is not a great combination um, we do have a few players that get injured a lot um, Peter Skoronsky is one of these Graham Barton goes down quite often uh, Joe Alt is quite solid actually um, and as you can see the, the re-injury risk is always high with him so this is something I am thinking about. All right, maybe maybe an interesting free agent, maybe a rookie. Let's see what we what we find. Uh, but again, these are questions that we will be uh, tackling as we head into off season. Basically, the offense is is an area that I feel pretty confident with our defense as well for the time being. However, there are players on defense that I am. I'm not going to say hesitant about, but that I'm just looking at. I'm just evaluating actively, especially older players, players that are, you know, turning 30 next season and are in a contract year. And I've got quite a few of those, actually. Namely, Tirtart and um, Aziz al Shayer, both of which I really like. Don't get me wrong. But on the other hand... Oh, here we go. Can we escape? No, we can't. Oh, Reed Blankenship breaking through. Getting a beautiful tackle here on Taiji Spears. They're setting up deep here. And by deep, I mean staggered uh, at the line of scrimmage. Basically to stop run plays. Oh, yikes. Get a stiff arm. All right, pushing forward. Dylan McMahon. Elbow, right? Ah, looks like the left wrist. Let's hope it's nothing bad. Oh, it is the tunnel. It is the tunnel. That is usually a bad sign. Third and three. Here we go. Come on, Titans. And there we go. Stiff arm one. And then pummeled by a dozen players. All right, Malik. Come on. Focus your passing now. Everybody, get ready. At the end of the quarter, we're going to try and punch it in immediately now Monday night prime time loving the graphics here we go white corner let's set this one up Spears is far left can I go for an audible here do I have a clever let's try this one actually I have Traylon Burks as the safety dude but I have Chico Conquo as well oh that is just um yeah, I should have gone for the safety dude here. Dislocated elbow. That's out. Aaron Brewer. Come on, man. I need you in there. Double slants. Double slants. Can we overpower them here? Do we have a clever play? Something that is maybe going to help us? Chick Okonkwo. Let's see. And yes, there we go. Malik Will is connecting beautifully here. With... Jig, who's one of my absolute favorite players on this franchise series. There's quite a few that I really like, um, but he's one that he, he was just fantastic. He went up from, did he have star? I think well, he I think he had a normal death trait, and he started in his. I'm, I would have to look it up, but I think he started in the low 70s. Um, as the defense is pushed back by this really brutal Texans team. You can see they're just very balanced. And they've got very good backup players as well. Ty J Spears, can we outrun them here? Now we can. Chick going down. Not great. Holding his ankle. But he basically went past two uh, development traits. He went star and then he now he's superstar. Single back, half back one. Noah Clancy coming in. We're gonna go with the bench here. Looking for Josh Wiley, looking for Caleb Palmer. Boom. Luckily, I just got that out before I was sacked. The number 51 was there. Very high aggression. Yikes. I think. 
we're gonna try and run it. They have a very, very uh, strong pass rush. That was a super important block here. Wow, that, what a good curve. And Ty G Spears off here. How far can we get? 15 yard line. 20 yard line? I think it's a 20 yard line. 22. Nice. But what a great run here by the running back. Just evading that tackle here with that tight turn, but actually without losing speed. That is fantastic. That is really fantastic. That is something that high ankle sprint. Crud. He's out again. Uh, anyhow, Taiji Spears is very good on the turn. Very good uh, in the speed department. And um, we're losing another starter here. How far can we go? That's seven yards as we are hit by the two minute mark. If we get another touchdown, that should put us at 14 and 10. And I'm really thinking hard of starting the time wasting here. Or do we just try and punch it in? Like this. Yeah, let's go down. Let's go down. They call a timeout of... Did I call the timeout? Did I just... I think I just touched it. Jesus, man. That was stupid of me. I touched the button. I, I don't know why. And I accidentally called the timeout. Silly, stupid. All right. Traylon Burks goes down here. And there we go. Clock is running. We're at the three yard mark. And we will be setting up something like this here. Where we've got a lot of players in running positions. We've got some time so we can shuffle around a little bit here. I'm looking for one more. We maybe drag him apart a little bit more. Just want to keep the clock running. Go down at the one yard line would be perfect. Because that would really waste it. Or go down again at the four. Why not? Because the clock is running now. Amari Rogers going down. A lot of injuries currently. Not a big fan of that. Not a big fan of that one. To be exactly honest. Um... Do we go... Let's go with the bench switch here. Let's set this one up here real quick. Looking at Phillips. Looking at Burks. Can I hot route Phillips? Phillips on an out. Yeah, there we go. Understood. Burks or Phillips. Those are my two players that I'm looking for. Boom. And Trail and Burks gets it. Shamar Stewart with an injury. We take away a little bit of their momentum. Come on, defense. Defense manages to stop them, actually. This is fantastic. 14 and 10. Yeah, we're super far back. Again, I've got two timeouts at 12 seconds. So <laughs> let's see what we do with that. Boom, what a hit. What a fantastic hit here. We're going to call a timeout. I'm going to try and exploit this as best as I can. You know, getting a field goal would be awesome because that would really give us some breathing space. The big question is, do we do we get into a position where that is viable? Uh, looking for verticals here. Uh, which one do I like? Let's go with this one here. Double post. Palmer and Burks are going to be running, and I am just hoping that they uh, that they get free. I'd rather hit Burks, actually. Boom, hard hitting here. All right, two seconds. I need a quick one. And the... Clock runs down? Didn't, didn't I call it? I didn't call it timeout. Ah, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't really matter that much. We are not doing that badly. We're going to get the ball now at the beginning of the second half. So we're going to run it inside. And we're going to keep defending the short pass. That has proven to be somewhat of a viable option here. Antoine Wells Jr. will be returning the ball towards the left-hand side. Oh, cannot escape. Jalen Petra stops us at the 21. I have yet to break through and really get a lot of yardage here. 
Hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. All right. Let's go. We're in inside zone again. We're going to kick it off with some run plays here, even if they're really prepping for that. Two rows of defenders. Oh, yikes. Yeah. That was a quick one. Number 48. That's Miles Jack, right? Nah, that's Harris. Christian Harris. I was thinking that that was going to be a good idea by, you know, maybe breaking through something like that. But probably should have gone with another play here. Josh Wiley or uh, Amari Rogers are my options here. What nice options they are. Amari Rogers pushing forward, going down at the 43. 3 minutes 18. Hyping the crowd or instigating the crowd, whatever that's. Uh, gonna be in your view what I do like about Malik Willis is uh, that he can handle being out of the pocket and on the run Will Levis has got better in that regard but of course it's not his forte he's he's one of those that is rather traditional quarterback you know, in the pocket he, dro he does drop back that does work but now we can't shuffle anymore. All right, let's go for a run. Let's just get as many yards as we can here out of this play. Six yards is actually not bad. Ty J Spears, 144 yards rushing today. Very good play by him. Very good play. Looking for Josh Wiley. Amari Rogers, also an option. But I am, of course, looking for Josh Wiley. Who has learned to hold on to the ball. In his first season, he was really, really bad. Then he wanted to leave the team for really weird reasons. Then he came back, signed out of free agency, and he's been with us ever since. A very serviceable player, really fantastic because he also played fullback for two, uh, two seasons. Then he switched back to the tight end uh, room and now he's sitting behind Chig. And more often than not, he has to take over, like now. Really appreciate that. Appreciate having a player that's versatile. Noah Clancy, Caleb Palmer. Oh, that is overthrown. An issue that we do have at times is the accuracy with Malik Willis, especially when he gets put under a lot of pressure. Let's go. Ty J Spears. Let's go. All right, we're going to be a first down. We're going to go down here. And that is an injury. Mm. Not again. Not again the ankle. Shuffling over. Taking the seat here. The physios. Taking a look. Alright. So what do we do? Let's go with the tight end angle. Just take it slow here. Amari Rogers. Wiley does have that route. But we're going to be looking for. Amari Rogers on this one here. Four yards. Joe Alt going down. Let's not make it a trend, guys. Let's not make it a trend. You can see the braces that Aziz Al Shayer has. I'd love to have those um, as a cosmetic for the legs as well. Because this is something that I'd give to Malik Willis. He injured his elbow last season. Was out with that. So, got the elbow brace. And now gonna be giving him the oh that was just slapped away there that's a total very good player by the way so Ty J Spears sitting this one out here and we are gonna go with a let's go with the flood towards the left hand side Rogers is an option Burks is an option Rogers taken down, but we get a first down. That was very important. Pushing forward. Uh, yeah, but in terms of storytelling, I would have liked to give uh, Will Levis one of those braces as well for the legs. Left knee in this case. For the ACL tear. Alright. Don't want to waste time, to be honest. I'd rather do that in the fourth quarter. But now I just want to see a touchdown here. And we're going to wait a little bit. We're going to 
got to go forward. Noah Clancy here taken down. And we are at the five yard line here. Malik Will is crossing the 100 yard mark. Number 25. Looking good here. Love the graphics. Really love the graphics. Something that I don't really get tired of looking at. So Chris McAdams with an ISO. Five yards. What I want to do is I want to punch in quickly. And then... Um, see what we can do after that moving forward to the two yard line Chris McAdams getting better getting better I will be looking to make him more of a power rusher over time Ty J Spears getting very close to just being the completest uh, dude I've seen in a long time push trying to push through but yeah we're held hmm Do we go with another ISO or do we try to bridge those two yards? With something like, I don't know, something like this. Don't have a lot of time actually left to think of something, but we're gonna try the play action spot here. Hitting Henry over there or Noah Clancy. Oh shit! Oh my lord! Yeah, I messed that one up. That was. That was bad, but Jalen Petra just coming through. Jesus, man. The offensive line just completely disintegrated there. Where did they come from? That's nah, just a free run, man. Free run. Derrick Henry goes over. Usually he would block, but I would need him. The pass would have had to come right now. I tried getting it off to uh, Noah Clancy, but that didn't work. So, making life more difficult for myself once again. It's moving slow, not due to the difficulty level, but due to the special ability that Evan McPherson has in the red zone. It moves slow. There we go. Greg Snow holding the ball here for him. And now defense. Come on, guys. Help us out here. Ah, they don't do that. All right, we're going to have to score again. Field goal will be enough. But still. This is not what I like to see. Uh, Josh Wiley is not getting there on time. He's not getting there on time. Has to be a little bit quicker, but uh, he's powerful and strong, but he's not fast. Ah, crud, man! These are my go-to plays usually in these kinds of situations. But not right now. Not with uh, Josh Wiley and Malik Willis. Not as precise. Gonna go with Burks now. Alright. I take that back. We are uh, at the 47. Well, Will Levis and Jig would have had that on the first go. I'm just putting that out there. We're gonna get, uh, get the run game going. Taiji Spears has returned gonna be using up time here I don't see the benefit of really rushing this play push back four yards here Evan McPherson he's getting ready I want to I want to get as close though as we can inside zone split gonna go right clock is taken down and again, maybe I'll be using my timeouts, but they're going to be icing us for sure. All right, trying to go forwards here. Let's use the first timeout. Let's use the first timeout here. Third and three. We're going to go with an ISO, Ty J Spears. Big runner. I just need my center to block that exclamation mark dude up there. If we can do that. Are uh, we? Oh, yes, we can. All right. That was good. First and 10 at the 36. We're going to try another pickup here. Just get a few yards in there. Get a little bit closer to the goal. Maybe use something like this here for, for a change. If we're incomplete, I don't care. We're going to go with a quick slant. 
and I'm looking at Traylon Burks. Jesus, man. Luckily, we get the ball away. Number 48 was coming for us again. That duo of Anderson and Harris is really nasty to play against. I'm telling you. A wide stick, 14 seconds to go. Amari Rogers is the dude I'm looking for. Mmm. Can't hold on to it. Pressure was there. Derek Stingley Jr. Just coming up behind him. I'm still not there yet. I'm still not there yet. We're going to go for four verticals here. And I'm going to be trying to get Ty J Spears just a few more yards. Maybe Josh Wiley can push us up the field. If we can do that, fine. If not, then it uh, doesn't matter too much. Yeah, incomplete. Poor accuracy out of reach. Again, that could have worked better. And now we're going to take a 53-yard field goal. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, it's going to be iced. But the kicker here is that Evan McPherson cannot be iced. That's a pretty cool feature, actually. Let's go. We also have the long arc. Perfectly timed kick. Power is good. Accuracy is perfect. And there we go. Evan McPherson. Take it from me. Get a superstar kicker. It is a life changer. Honestly is. Super important to have that. Because he's going to get the points that you're going to need. And sometimes it's down to just a few. The Texans away. A very hard team to beat. But we do just that. 20 versus 17. Again some injuries. Again some... Not controversy, but just challenges. Challenges in there. And with that said and done, thank you for the game, CJ Stroud. All right, sorry about that. I clicked too quickly and uh, went past the uh, the stats. But here we go. We can see that uh, strong second half and the fourth, uh, strong second quarter and fourth quarter is enough uh, to beat them. In the end, it comes down to a field goal um looking at the passing malik willis does well enough right he had a sack but uh, two touchdowns i'm very happy with that 139 yards uh, completion rate 57 percent that could be a little bit better taiji spears unrivaled man unrivaled 161 yards fantastic job no touchdowns but it's just so important for the team on the receiving side tank Dell leading it of course amari rogers everybody just chipping it a little bit uh, again spread over a lot of players rather than only a few solo tackle leader Derek Knox well done my man uh, total tackle leader who's this Greg Newsom tackles for loss leader Christian Harris one sack yeah Jalen Petra zero interceptions and on the kicking side Evan McPherson really helped us out and scored that winning uh, field goal so that was fantastic uh, we will now be taking a look at the injuries who is that hopefully nothing too long oh that sucks all right, Roger McCreary, five weeks, Dylan McVay, and four weeks. Oh, Jesus, man, they're dropping like flies again, especially the cornerbacks. This is an issue. We're going to have to think of something here. Caleb Farley already is on injured reserve. Uh, Roger McCreary has the same length. He's my uh, leading uh, cornerback, so I think we're going to have to bring in some free agents here. We're going to be handling that next week. Uh, but yeah, something to think about towards the end of regular season. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's game. I certainly did. If you did, do drop a like. Please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for being a part of my journey. See you next time.